Okay, so you know how um, you know how a lot of a lot of bad reviews say like I just needed this, and they said that I needed this other stuff, and they didn't agree to their original quote, kind of thing. So you know, there's always the customer side and the uh, and the service center side of things, and this one actually was no conflict. There wasn't conflict here, but I just want to give you an idea of where some of this conflict comes from by showing you a board that got sent in for keyboard replacement that thought there was nothing but keyboard replacement needed. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, do you want your keyboard replaced because you spilled something on it? No. Yes. 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 What the f oh, okay. So what's this? this? This is the cool part about having a microscope camera is because like there, there's really no need to argue. There's really no need to go back and forth. I just, okay, so this is your machine, right? Yes. This is your serial number, right? Yes. So this is your motherboard. No. Oh, oh, yes, it is. Because <laughs> um, it, yeah. So needless to say, this this needs more than a, than a keyboard, and we're going to go through that today. So I, I'm, again, a lot of people go, "How do you test if the component is bad?" That's another very very popular question, and uh, my my popular answer as of recently is is with with my eyeballs. Um, I'm not taking out a multimeter and measure any of this. So that stuff is, is go, go, gone. You know, well, one of the things I always say if you do this as a business, you don't want to say, okay, in the schematic, what is that? Okay, that's a 75 ohm resistor. Let me look up a 75 ohm resistor. Let me buy a 75 ohm resistor. Okay, that's done. Okay, what's that? Oh, that's a 22 UI microfarad cab. Let me just buy a 20. No, no, no. You want to have a board that has all that stuff on it already and just go, dink, doink, dink, doink, dink, doink. You don't want to spend all day ordering this stuff because it really is a complete fucking waste of time. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just literally going to turn the air filter on and I'm going to knock all of that stuff off the board. I'm going to just, you know, get rid of all of it because it's all a waste. It's all disgusting. I'm really not going to bother figuring out which of these 17 cent components I can save. It's just, it just all goes in the trash. Goodbye. 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 Sayonara. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. GTFO. Fuck you. Fuck you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sayonara. GTFO. Oh, big GTFO. And you too. What the hell? You're gone. And LCD connector. I have no plans of attempting to reuse any of that stuff. That's the thing. Like, you got these places that offer a one-year warranty, but they don't actually watch for that. On board repairs, I offer a three-month warranty because a lot of the stuff that we get, for lack of a better way to say it, is just really, really fucked up. But I'm not leaving that shit on there. Uh, that's the thing. Like, I am going through this with an eye. To, uh, I'm going through this with, the, with the, just the general type of thinking where I don't ever want to see you again. Unless, you know, you're here to bring me some organic veg vegetable juice or something fun. Like, I'm going through this with the idea that when you, when you leave, this, this just has to work and never come back. So I'm going through it with the idea of fixing all these little things up front. Then we're going to get rid of all the junk on the pads. Oh, and that capacitor, by the way, yeah, that's got to go. Get out of here. GTFO. I'm not testing you to see if you're good. My eyes tested you, and my eyes said that you're bad. I don't even care if you're good. You look like that. You have no place on my motherboard. So on some points, I am scraping the board a little bit because I want those pads to not have shit on them anymore. Also doing that with a big solder ball that has some flux inside of it.
Same thing is true over here. We just scrape and we scrape and we scrape. All right. I didn't spill something on it. Was it water? Well, I think that was it. Oh, but you didn't spill anything on it. See, that, that, that's actually a great example. I may or may not wind up not editing that part out of the video so that you could hear that phone call. I didn't spill anything on it. Oh, but water, that's probably it. <laughs> I don't understand people. I don't. Oh, that wishful thinking. That silly wishful thinking. Yeah, so we, uh, we have some jumpers to run from some corroded shit, don't we? Okay. That will come on shortly. We will run jumpers to the corroded little thingy shortly. Let's just start replacing everything. Let's just get the... Alrighty. Now, what do you think is smarter? Should I solder an LCD connector on and then use hot air to put all these little small components on? Or put all the small components on with the hot air and then put the LCD connector? Survey says LCD connector after using hot air. Oh, and there's the pads for the backlight fuse are gone, as is the backlight fuse. But that should not have been a surprise. Can't believe I missed that. Can't believe this actually got sent in for a keyboard. See, this, by the way, this here, this here, this is proof that this never actually worked. There is no, there is no, well, maybe it worked, but the corrosion destroyed it later in the mail. No, this here is where the backlight fuse for the backlight of the screen go. The pads are not there, the fuse is not there, and it's burned. This never worked. This is not a keyboard replacement. No, no, no. Again, I'm not, not saying this to be combative or mean, but again, you're going to read a lot of reviews of a lot of different businesses. But honestly, it's, it's, rare that it happen, it's rare that it actually gets to the review state here. It is rare, because just because I have somebody hired here whose sole job is to spend time with people. And because here's the thing. You can explain it. Let's say you're a tech. You, you, you're spending your time doing this stuff, right? You're spending your time replacing stuff. This is where you need to spend your time. It's not really on talking to people. Talking to people separates you from being able to do this. You kind of rush through it. If you try to explain in 30 seconds what's going on, they're going to hate you. If you spend 15 minutes, you can explain the exact same thing where they may not be happy, but they're actually going to like you or they're going to believe you. And you need to have that time. So I have somebody here who really who does that. This is his job is to spend time with people to explain these miserable, annoying situations. Like, oh, you paid for this, but you really need this. Oh, yeah, you're saying it worked before, but again, the components that you claim worked are actually missing and burned and blah. You know, th this is the thing. It's like, I don't want you to think it's about being combative, but I'm just showing you it as an example because, again, you know, a there's the consumer side and then there's the tech side and the tech side of it is you know you said you needed this and you said it worked before but how how tell me we, we, can, electricity cannot conduct across this like that's <coughs> and I really hate using this as an example because this person was not at all combative but you have a lot of people that are really combative about this stuff and again you know it just gives uh, whether it's a mechanic or whether it's you know any type of repair person, it's just kind of a bad reputation because because of it. And I just want to give you the other side of it, which is this, you know. Again, okay, because there are a lot of places out there that are dumb or that will screw you or that will you know steal stuff or upsell for no reason. But then there's just the, really the like 
you, you, your board is missing pieces of it that need to work. That's just science. And the hot air station turned off again. Fucking hackle. 650 bucks on this thing, plus tips. That's a brand new heating element. I know, because you, know, you don't you want to believe me. This is my old heating element. Not an eBay heating element I bought. Not cheap shit. Thing came from all spec with next day shipping. Be better off with a damn lighter and compressed air. Ugh. Mm -hmm. I'll straighten that out later because that is just sloppy, sloppy shit. I don't want to touch it up as I go along. I like to kind of have that as a touch-up stage if I'm replacing a bunch of tiny components. It'll be a touch-up stage and a touch-up time. Might as well put a little layer of flux just to make this all easier, though. All that stuff will kind of flow into place a little nicer. That's Amtec 559 Flux. A lot of people have been asking what the GUI stuff is. That's Amtec 559 Flux. If you Google, you'll find out why, what Flux does. And mainly, this solder has Flux inside of it. Oh my God, you turned off again, you fucking piece of shit. I am done endorsing Hacko products. Like, really, this is... Oh, you, it just... This thing used to turn off if the heat was above 6.5 and, and the air was below 10. Now it turns off if the air is below 20 and the heat is above 6. Like, what the hell? Anyway, was, anyway flux helps solder flow. So solder itself is, is a material that melts and that you know, can conduct electricity and all that good stuff. But for it to actually flow into joints nicely, there's something called flux. There's a lot of flux. There's a lot of solder that contains flux inside of it. But as you use it, when you actually see stuff steaming, that's not the solder. When you see that smoke, that is the flux. And when you burn the flux away, it's not going to really uh, work as well. It's not going to flow anymore. So if you have a little tube of flux like I do, it can help. Obviously, it works better when your hot air station puts out hot air. But there we'd be asking just a little too much. Yeah, I just couldn't wait to start touching it up, could I? No discipline. And it, so let's see what's next. So you got the... I really don't know why I'm doing a video of just you watching me solder. This is not brain work. This is not brain work at all. Like, you don't have to think to just say, oh... Component look nasty. Me replace nasty component. I like putting up videos of thinking. Not this. I'm also much better at thinking than I am at the, this. This is supposed to be the easy stuff, but it requires hands with good manual dexterity, which I don't have, as you can see there. So we're going to... I also have to have the air so high for this piece of fucking crap to not turn off that it blows the components away. I don't mind buying cheap stuff that works like shit, but I mind when I pay good money and the stuff works like shit. Okay.
Touch up on that can happen later. It turned off again. It's at 20. Oh, what, you want me to just use you at 25 all the time so you don't turn off? What a waste of time. That's what I got my phone here. Might as well just stick with my phone while I'm waiting for the hot air station to do its job. Ready to melt solder now? Barely. That will, that's nasty soldering. We'll fix that later. I wish it were possible to use this at a reasonable air level. Here's something that I probably lost before, and I don't know what you are anymore. Goodbye. I turn the air down to a reasonable level. The, the heat is at five and a half and the shit turned off. Dick around with the phone again.
And we wait. I guess I at least use this time to preheat the board. Wait for the hot air to come back on. I'm thinking of getting a pace. Even if I get another hack going, you still got to worry about that whole it turning off for no reason shit. Because even when this thing was brand new out of the box, if the air was, if you had the air uh, lower than 10 or 15 and the heat higher than 6.5 or 7, it would turn itself off. I just want something that's just like, when I want it to be hot, just like stay hot long enough for me to do my fucking job. And then when I turn you off, then you can be cold. You have, no, seriously, like, when I, I'm not here at night. You have all night to be cold. You have all night to be cold. You don't need me, uh, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't need to be cold in the middle of a soldering job, in the middle of work. Holy sh! It, it turned off at the air at twenty-five. Whoa! What a pile of shit this thing has become. We didn't properly clean that pad. And now... Not only did we not properly clean that pad, I ripped that pad. That's what jumper wires are for. What you're going to do? That is totally what jumper wires are for. Yeah, that's the Magewell capture dongle crapping out, so you won't be able to see the microscope again soon. This video is doomed. <laughs> Let's see. Can I fix that? By tapping the thing? Magewell? Don't buy cheap Chinese capture... Okay, we're in, we're back. So I did lose some patience, so I did some soldering without you. Sorry, you know, have to get on with the work day. Can't, 
But Magewell dongle is back in business. Hopefully it doesn't flicker and do some stupid shit. Yeah, I did do some soldering off the camera. You'll forgive me, I'm sure. Nothing works today. Dongle doesn't work today. Hot air doesn't work today. Just one of those days. I know what you're thinking, but that doesn't look perfect. It is a little piece sticking off of that component. And I'm here to tell you that that is just fine. Uh, uh, I'm going to go through and do a little bit of touch-up. Hey, remember what I said when you try to make things perfect, what happens? I don't think I'll ever learn. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever learn sometimes. You know, it would be really poetic justice if the hackle just turned off on me right as I said that. This is one of those days. My solder spool doesn't want to work either. Got tangled. No, I just... Okay, now to the backlight fuse section. Now to my whole, yeah, there's no way in hell all this needed was a keyboard section.
All I need is a keyboard repair. Yep. Lewis, how do you cut your wire to length? Uh, you're looking at it. Yep. Oh, God damn it. This piece of shit dongle died again. You fucking piece of crap. Magewell. And we're back in business. Yes, it works. Gotta be careful when you use this crappy, cheap shit capture hardware. Cause I was wondering, because I was running that little wire, and I'm like, man, that wire looks really, really neat. Like, that wire looks a little too neat. And then I noticed that there was no wire in the screen. <laughs> because the fucking thing froze. So that's the thing. It's not going to tell you when it froze. You just have to be constantly monitoring the video to ensure that the little dongle doesn't freeze. So, yeah, so that little place where the pad was broken, I scratched away over here, and then I just soldered it directly to the resistor. We're going to do the same on the other side. That's already kind of solderable. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's solderable. There's a time in every, every person's life where they believe that if the pad comes off of the board, that it's not fixable. And that's the thing. Like, you can laugh about that now, but really, there was a time when you thought the same thing, so, so shut up. There was a time when I thought that. You know, I thought, pad comes off the board? Oh, you need a lab to fix that. You know? Come on. Go away, short. Go away. Shoo. Shoo. There we go. 
Let's get this in a little closer. I don't want to smell this crap. Doesn't matter how hard you twist this little blue piece at the end on, it always manages to fall off of the hose. Okay, so your wire. That's way too long. We can always make it shorter later. Oh, I made a huge mess. Redo. Redo. I hate jumpers. Ah, uh, suck at this. Let's get one really tiny. See, that's much better. That's... Oh, you didn't... There. Yeah, it's much better when it's soldered, jackass. I thought it was soldered. It was pointing the other way. Oh, that was fucking stupid. Yeah, okay, that's that. We've got a few more to do here. We're not even close to done. Touch the resistor, touch the pad, and get the solder on there. Okay. Scrapity, scrapity, scrape. Ugh. Let's just clean some of that flux. We don't. It's about time. Using an ESD safe paper towel. Sparkle paper towel from Amazon. Nice. Yeah. ESD safety is real important to me. I just left a little get get the fuck out of here. Okay.
Vâng. All right, that's going to be a pain in the ass. I give. I cave. That light can stay there. It's learning from the hacko and the magewell dongle how to be a pain in the ass. I'll accommodate it being a pain in the ass just because. This is probably painful for you to watch. So much shit is in the way all the time. It's, oh, it's annoying. I know that's a big blob, but the big blob is going to make it easier for me to shorten my wire. I can always make that look a little nicer later. Now we run that wire to that leg of the transistor that refuses to want to stick out. Okay. Now it's obviously going to be time to, that whole thing's going to have to get cleaned, because that's disgusting. This is definitely a candidate for the toothbrushing and the ultrasonic cleaner before this ever goes back to a customer. I am not letting something look like that and go back to a customer, no way in hell. That's the thing that people I don't think realize with flux and <coughs> stupid cough and some of that stuff is, you know. You can do all that. It don't matter. What matters is, are you going to give it back to somebody looking like that? And I'm sure I'm going to have other rework to do in the Firewire port region. But man, the shit I go through so that you can have Firewire. How many people even really use Firewire? Really, besides audio engineers that use ARMY interfaces. Besides that, who uses Firewire? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. <laughs> It's Firewire is it's a cool way to get. They have this MADI interface that's pretty cool. RME has so that you can use uh, 16 or 32 channels of your own digital to analog conversion with a laptop. It's pretty cool. And Firewire is definitely a you know, much sturdier port than the USB 3, uh, the small USB 3 kind, like the mini ones. Let's see, still working, Magewell? Good. Okay, where's my WIC? Here, WIC. 
I just had that a minute ago. Uh huh. Okay, here you are. Get this in close. Because this is going to make a terrible amount of smoke. Right, we go in and let's remove. <laughs> really? Oh, thank you. Yeah. This is this is one of those days. So I'm out of the connectors that have the two little legs in the bottom that shove it into the board so you know where it goes. And on top of that, the connector doesn't even want to leave the tweezers. Yeah, it's definitely, it's one of those fucking days. It's one of those days. All right. Let's see. So anything on the edge of my tweezers, let's burn it off. Go hacko. Boil. Clean. So yeah, there see these holes on the board? You can put the connector in the holes. The whole idea is that it aligns itself if you have the right one. Which I don't. So I have to align it manually. There we go. Let's turn the light down. Too much reflection. Yeah, and make sure all the pins are where you want them to be. Actually, I think this does have the pins on it. This may have the pins that I need. That would be amazing. Was I just complaining for nothing? Probably. Okay. Yeah, it does. It's sticking. Amazing. But you don't want to get any solder inside the actual connector because that will be a nightmare. You want it to be soldered to the board, but you don't want to get solder inside the connector. Because then you will never get the cable in there. Or even worse, you send it back. If this is a board-only repair for a customer, what they're going to do is they're going to try to shove that in there. And when they shove it in there, they're going to rip your connector straight off of the board. No good. B Paco knows how to make some annoying products now, don't they? Listen to that. That's Because that's necessary. When you don't have a tip plugged in... <laughs> It's a beep at you at 85 dB. Totally necessary. I don't think this would even be a usable product if they didn't have the thing fucking beep at you. The highest volume possible. Oh, man. I'm not a hacko fanboy today. I just want to turn the hot air off. See, it's on. You know why it's on right now? Because I don't have to use it. It's like this thing fucking senses when I'm actually doing work and just decides that the red light to turn off and to fuck with me for no reason. But it's been sitting there for about 
10 minutes without me doing any hot air rework, it worked fine. Go figure. Oh no, I have a bridge. Oh no, what am I going to do? Oh no, it's broken. I'm never going to be able to do it. Oh no. What do you do? Oh, wait. whoops. See, this is the magic of Amtec 559. Look at that. Zing, zing. Gentlemen, ladies, Amtec 559 Flux. This, that's a product I can stand behind. Like, look at that. Because <laughs> you know how miserable that would have been with, with any other Flux. Okay. Okay, now I certainly can't say that this is perfect. I'm not going to even try to tell you that it's perfect, but you remember what this looked like before? Like I, I may cut this here and show you what it looked like before for a few seconds. Just so you can see. I'm going to cut to the before and the after, but I mean This was scorched earth before. This was like just total trash. We kind of went from total trash to something that's actually working and usable. So you see that that, uh, that solder blob over there is 100% fine because this goes to both from the same place. That's the LCD connector. That's uh, filter capacitors on backlight. That's uh, image filter. That's U9000 that's going to take power and send it to the LCD to turn the LCD on. That there is for fire wires. So you can see where we have the, no, we have that little extension there for where there's no pad. This little extension with the wire, we scraped away there for where there was no pad. That's, that's not as nice as I'd like it to be, but you know what? It works and it goes over here. And you know that I had FireWire because I showed you it booting with the FireWire. So that's that. Yeah, the, the, this thing looked like a complete... Oh, and also the, the backlight fuse. We can't forget that since that is the whole... It only needs a keyboard thing, so we, we scraped away and we have a backlight fuse there. So yeah, this is a pretty good example. Now we took something that was pretty scorched and burned to shit and turned it into a fully functioning machine. Okay, so I messed up, and this is thing in Open Broadcaster, when you hit Start Recording, it starts recording right over the last file you did. So if it sees that there's the same file name, it doesn't uh, create a new file name with a dash and a one or something, it just overwrites the old one. And guess what happened to the footage that I did of me testing that the machine actually worked. So as I showed you, as I've said before, I don't want you um, listening to me, if the work that I do doesn't work. This is not a channel where there's a bunch of you know, crappy techno music playing and you get to watch me fix things and then not test them at the end. I want you to see that it actually works. So here we worked on the screen circuitry and the firewire circuitry, and I'd like to show you that that actually works. And it would probably work a lot better if I actually plugged the screen in properly. Needless to say, uh, with the original screen cable, this ain't working. So, and that's to be expected with how bad that looked. So we're going to try with 
a different screen, a different screen cable. And also, I'm going to use a FireWire enclosure here. And I'm going to boot up on the FireWire enclosure. And just in case any of you think I'm cheating and that the FireWire couldn't possibly work after how screwed it got, I'm going to unplug the internal hard drive cable over here. So you can see it's flapping around. Somebody actually commented recently, I, th I think you're swapping the computers or the boards out when you show us they work. And it's like, seriously? Like, you can't even see my head right now. That's how bad the editing in the filmography here is. Is that like, And you think I have the time to do that kind of stuff? Dude, it's, it's, uh, fixing boards is easy. Fixing boards is no problem. But editing, editing, <laughs> like deceptive editing, that is hard. And fixing boards is easy. That, I have no problem. So I'll down Alt. As you can see, it sees my FireWire drive. Obviously, the screen stuff works. And I'm going to boot into my FireWire SSD. FireWire 800, and in 2015, it's a pretty dated protocol. The SSD is far faster than the FireWire. But you'll see that it's going to boot up into my operating system just fine over FireWire, which is pretty cool. So that means that I'm done. Again, on the whole screen and the screen cable thing, yeah, about that whole you sending it in and saying all you needed was a keyboard. My job is done. Now, now the rest of this, the whole like, yeah, you can't plug in. I burned and corroded and destroyed screen cable into the board and expect it to work. I'll let the sales guy have fun with that phone call. But my job here again, my job, screen works. This works. I'm good. I'm happy.